Hello, this is Dr. K from First Look MRI, and this is a 49-year-old female. She had a falling injury about five weeks ago and she had continued shoulder pain. And we have a view here looking straight at the shoulder. This round area is the humeral head. There's the humeral neck, and here's the humeral shaft. Out here is the deltoid muscle, which is dark, and over that is the normal subcutaneous fat. We have the glenoid, part of the scapula, the big scapula here, forms a cup called the glenoid fossa. The humeral head rotates in there to get our anatomy down. Now we get our anatomy above the shoulder joint. This other joint is the AC joint, or the acromioclavicular joint. So the clavicle is here, goes all the way over to the sternum. It ends right here, and this is the acromion. Now this patient has an abnormal appearance of their acromion. Normally this would be more horizontal, but in this patient it goes down. We call this inferior lateral acromion tilt, or lateral down sloping. So instead of horizontal, it goes down, and when it does, it can push on this structure underneath. This is part of the rotator cuff. Here's the supraspinatus muscle, thinning out, becoming the black tendon, and the tendon attaches here on the humeral head. And so this configuration, we would say there's lateral downsloping of the chromium or inferior lateral a tilt of the chromium, which may predispose to impingement or pinching of the rotator cuff between the humeral head the patient moves the arm. Now there's another view of this. You can see it over here as well on this view. On this view, fluid is bright, so this is fluid. We see that not only is this pointing downwards, but there's some abnormal signal in the rotator cuff. There's tendinopathy, and there's fluid, which means bursitis. So they have bursitis related to this um, pinching of the rotator cuff or impingement. Now if we put up another view, this is looking for a different angle. We can see the acromion process here. Normally the acromion will parallel the round humeral head here. So about right here it should be more uh, parallel to it, but instead it's tilted f towards it. So pointed downwards towards this, and we call this a positive slope. If it was perfectly parallel, we call it neutral, but when it angles down like this, it's a positive slope. And that abnormal sloping can also predispose to impingement. So you have two things, infralateral chromium tilt and a positive chromium slope. You can see how it's pushing on this rotator cuff. This dark band is the rotator cuff going over the humeral head. And here's bone, here's bone, here's the soft rotator cuff tendon complex here. And right here you can see how it's flattened and compressed and kind of pinched in here. So it looks like this patient has probably chronic impingement, which is really a clinical term. And there's white here. This is that fluid or uh, bursitis, evidence of acute bursitis. And the rotator cuff, again, is not jet black. It's in gray. So they have tendinopathy of the rotator cuff. So it's a really common classic kind of case of um, abnormal configuration of the chromium with rotator cuff tendinopathy and acute bursitis. They had one other finding related to their labrum. So on this view, we see the glenoid here, the cup off in the scapula. We see the round ball of the humeral head. We see the biceps tendon right here. And in the front, we see a little black triangle. This is the labrum that goes around the rim of this cup. And there's also some abnormal signal in that anterior labrum. Very, very subtle, barely discernible. It should be just perfectly dark. So there's a little linear band of brightness, so it looks like a little labral tear. And the bone underneath has little bright spots. There's a little subchondral erosion that goes along with that labral tear. They also had a little blip of fluid right there, that little white dot. That's a paralabral cyst. So when a, a torn labrum occurs, fluid can weep out of it and form a little fluid pocket, we call it a paralabral cyst. So the patient has a tear of their anterior inferior labrum, very, very subtle, and then that rotator cuff tendinopathy, and the tendinopathy again is uh, related to uh, probably chronic impingement, pinching of that rotator cuff. And that's it, thank you very much.